ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Jungle Island Adventures. I am not moving around too much because the frame rate is pretty poor right now because of all this flowing lava and the fire going there. Uh, the nether is a laggy place. But you can see a little marker off, to, off in the distance there. And that is showing the way to a nether fortress to which I have been. And I would say it was rather successful. No wither skeleton skulls, but uh, we did get blaze rod, nether wart, and soul sand. So uh, you can't really ask for more. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back because we're all done here. I'm probably not going to record much in the nether, at least until I get a new computer because it is so laggy. Um, the What we're going to do today, we're not going to be doing brewing potions. I just got the urge to go into the nether and and grab that stuff because I've got some plans for what I want to do with the brewing and I won't reveal those quite yet. But it is coming up. But if you remember in the last episode we built this huge tower, okay? Just uh, looming over the whole island and the reason is we're going to put the base there. The first thing we need to do um, we're actually going to be building from top down Oddly enough, I got a plan from the top down, but I kind of got a build from the bottom up, at least for the general mob farm, which is going in the top segment, all the way at the top. And that's to make sure that we don't have any interference with the mob cap down here. But, uh, oh man, look at that lag. Let's turn down the render distance a little bit. We're probably going to lose the tower now. But that's fine. We don't need to see, see it. That's fine. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, the, the tower or the general mob farm design, I did leave a link to it in the last episode. I'm going to keep leaving links to it until we finish the thing, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to build it in this episode, all right? Now, that's, that's seemingly ambitious. I'm not going to do everything on camera. A lot of it is just basic block placement, which can get kind of boring, but... Uh, I'll do the redstone on camera with you, and uh, we'll go from there. So I will be back in a bit, and we will be upstairs working on that. All right? Talk to you later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and we are up here in the tower. We're not quite all the way in the top. I'm just making sure I've got enough resources, and we're going to head on upstairs. Just um, ignore that structure for now. We will get to that in a future episode. But what we want to do is we want to go all the way up to the top here. So let's start that. And uh, have a little chat while I'm going up here. Um, you know, this is a rather striking build. This uh, monolithic cobblestone tower reaching up out of the jungle hill. Um, and because it is rather striking, we do need a name for it. And so I'm just announcing a little... Uh, little contest, if you will. There's nothing spectacular attached to it. No big prizes or anything. It's just um, you get to to say, hey, I came up with that name, but I would like a name for this tower. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, I'll just keep it open for quite some time. We'll have a little contest and, um, you know, just give me some name suggestions. We are, you know, it's just a tower sticking out of a hill, but, um, Hey, if you've got an idea or multiple ideas, just put them in the comments below. And um, what I will do is I will gather them all together. And uh, then what we'll do is when we get ready to move in to the tower as a base. Okay, so right now I'm in that hidey hole. When we get to moving in, um, you know, when a lot of the, the major stuff is done, this mob farm is done. Uh, we get an iron and gold farm set up, and we get a storage room going. Um, once we get the storage room, then we'll be able to really move in because we'll we'll be able to take all our items and put them there. So once that happens, then we'll pick a name. So the way I'll do it, I'll just take all the suggestions, and uh, I'll pick the ones that I really like the best. I wouldn't mind naming. And um, what we will do is uh, I'll put a straw poll together, and then put that in and we'll just make sure we get it to where there's a majority vote um, so it may be multiple runoffs or whatnot and uh, and we'll go from there and, and whatever ends up winning um, in the straw poll 
will become the name of the tower and we'll just I'll just make sure you get the proper credit and all but um, anyway that's enough about that uh, we're up here in the tower um, where I need to start the mob farm let's take a look at the y coordinates real quick we're at 193 um, and 193 and a half technically you see the the half block there that's 194 we need to be on this block but the neat thing is since this is a bottom half slab that no mobs will spawn so I can actually take out all these torches and we'll be fine well except for that dirt block right there um, but anyway um, this is going to be the general mob farm I left a link in the description below so if you would go check that out real quick and then we'll come back and uh, and I'll, I'll you'll understand better the decisions I'm making okay so right here's the collection area and in the design on the Minecraft forum post um, there's actually a one wide collection area and and you've got a little XP um, XP grinder type thing um, I did not want to do that because in my testing I found that baby zombies are actually problematic now this this design was originally intended for 1.5 and that was before baby zombies came along and um, and yeah, they they are a bit problematic when you have a one high um, area. Okay, normally uh, normally uh, the regular mobs wouldn't be a problem, but uh, baby zombies are. So um, what I I needed to do is either cap it to where the baby zombies just um, don't come through. Uh oh. Um, and that would be a half block that's a, it was fine but it, it was really hard to use and you know we I just decided you know we've already got a mob or a XP grinder so uh, I, I just pulled that feature out I keep doing that what in the world okay um, so you see what I'm doing here is putting in the glass and the stone brick um, little design statement so that's gonna go all the way around but I pulled out the XP grinder um, and that that means that we can just do regular mob collection so that's what this is going to be and I've got a block in the middle here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's see if I can pop down without falling um, do I have it yeah you can see it right there I'm gonna put a dropper and it's gonna face down and all of the hoppers will face into that and so what we'll do is we'll just have a little comparator clock shooting the items down and, and eventually it all all go to the storage system so um, that's another little change um, the other thing is that the redstone is not going to go on this level we're going to keep this fairly clean um, it's going to go on the level above and there's one more oh yeah the original design had six spawning platforms I'm only going to do five um, and that was really to help make sure I had enough clearance to keep this 32 blocks or more away from where the Endermen are going to be because we need to make sure that they can't teleport. We don't want to teleport. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's part of the ambitious project for this episode. Um, and I'm not going to do the whole thing on camera because, it, again, like I said, it's a lot of block placement. Um, and that part won't be that, or it may not be that interesting. You can let me know, but I just want to make sure I don't waste your time because you are taking time to um, just take a look at what I'm doing here and I want to make sure that I honor that uh, that choice I do know you you have choices to make with your time so uh, I want to give you good stuff so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build most of this off-camera and then when we come back I will go through the farm and we'll do the final setup so most of the redstone will be in place the clock won't be in place I'll build that with you and uh, we'll be able to talk a little bit about what's going on up there but uh, It'll, it'll look a little bit different um, the next time I come back, and uh, then we'll go over that, okay? So uh, bear with me, and if you haven't done so already, do take a chance right now to go look at that mob farm, and you can see some of the principles behind it. I'll try and explain most of it, but um, the, the uh, person that came up with it did a really good job of explaining all of it, so I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due, and I'll get that name. I don't have that right off the top of my head, but uh, again, it's down in the description. So um, anyway, I will see you in just a moment. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and we're up here in the tower. Before I show off anything, I do want to let you know that I have gotten the name of the original designer of this farm, and that is Mr. X Prime. And again, that's going to be in the description below, a little link to the Minecraft forum post where he had that, uh, that design. But um, anyway, we're here. And I left off and I said I was going to build the remainder of the farm. And so we, progress has been made, right? So I finished this all the way around. Glass. And then everywhere that you see is going to be the stone brick. Now, I could go through and do some more designs. But for the most part, this is going to be... I'll just come up here every now and then to refill uh, items that seem to be running low. So I'm not really going to do much around here. Um, but I did want to make it look not as ugly with that cobblestone. And so wherever there's going to be platforms, I'm probably going to blow out the walls and put in stone brick or some other block. But, but here we go. The, I've dressed up the collection area uh, because spiders, I've, in my testing, I've found that spiders tend to latch onto the walls and they end up resetting their fall damage and they come down and they don't actually take any fall damage so sometimes we end up with spider clog down here so the cactus are going to help out with that they'll uh, they'll be able to run into it and then uh, these these posts right here will keep any potential baby zombies from getting out hopefully it'll at least run them by the um, by the cactus so Hopefully we don't have any issues like that, but uh, you never know. We'll see. Okay, so if you... Well, I'm, we're going to be testing this, so we'll know pretty quickly. But uh, let me show you a little bit more. Oh, and a note that is a lever, and we're going to go take a look at that. All right, so I built the primary part of this, the infrastructure, okay? So up there is the mob collection area. This is the drop tower. Then we've got a little torch tower. And right here we are going to be building the engine. Okay. Little redstone engine. Um, and that is going to be driving the whole farm. Okay. And once we're done with that, once we're, we've tested it and made sure that, okay, it, it seems to be working fine, then, um, uh, well, I'm, I'll show you. We'll go up there and we'll listen to it firing off. I'm not going to fill it with water yet, just uh, because once the water goes in, the farm is on, and uh, the danger potential goes up if I am up there. So um, the resources I need right now are in this chest, so we'll just pull these down. Um, one of the things I am doing... Uh, let's see, the original design called for an etho hopper timer and some uh, redstone, um, what are they, uh, pulse shorteners. And just to, because the, the hopper timer gives a, a periodic signal rather than a periodic pulse, and so we need a pulse. But uh, I'm using the TT Sword Minecraft quiet hopper timer because I don't, it's just my favorite um, it like it says it's uh, it's quiet so I really like quiet redstone I don't like the um, the uh, what's it uh, pistons firing constantly and uh, so yeah that's why I'm using this design and I'm building it on camera, and that's going to slow me down a little bit. Let's just get rid of stuff I don't need. Actually, I might need that pick. We'll uh, get stuff in. Ooh, scary noises. All right. That should be good to go. We'll have comparators going in. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And then comparators going out here. And then the hoppers going into each other. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to this particular design. And uh, you can take a look at the originator. So there we go. It's, um, 
that's the main driver. Um, I'm putting hop or uh, furnaces on top of the, any exposed hoppers that will keep stuff from falling in and potentially clogging up the system. And then, oh, I didn't get my, my dirt. I need dirt. So this will be the latch mechanism. Oh, I should have put one in there. And then this is the actual timer. And we're going to put 50 in there. Okay, that'll make sure that we have enough coming out of it. And then our main, main thing. Um, so we're going to be pulling signal off of this torch. And that's pretty simple. We're, we need to turn that signal into a pulse. And the way you do that, this is a quiet uh, pulse shortener or um, rising edge detector, depending on how you want to call it. Oh no, I had that already. So the way it works is this: when this signal turns on, it's going to fire this dropper, which is going to shoot an item, just a single item, into this hopper. This comparator is going to read uh, that a signal has come through, and we're going to send a pulse up that torch tower, which right now, so we've got that torch, and that just carries all the way up, and we'll see that in a little bit when we go do the testing, okay? So what's going to happen is when, um, when this turns off, which means this has come back through, we're going to get that signal turned on, and um, that will actually turn on all the dispensers up top. And then not too much longer later, what we need to do is we need to pull a signal off of here, and we're going to go into a block that has a another one of these quiet pulse shorteners and we'll pull the signal off of that and run that into a block with that and then redstone repeater to increase the signal because um, we're just putting a piece of dirt in here and that's just going to give a signal of one out of this comparator so we do need to boost the signal and that's what that repeater is doing and there we go so um, this is going to turn on once this hopper gets full to a certain percentage so it's going to roughly work out to 30 seconds of spawning time uh, when the uh, dispensers up top have turned off the spawning platforms are going to be completely clear and uh, what will happen then is the mobs will start spawning. So we'll get 30 seconds of spawning time and then this signal is going to fire and turn on all the dispensers, wash them off into the drop platform and then about 9-10 seconds later the signal is going to get long enough to power this block, the repeater will fire and then turn uh, this, this pulse again and that will turn off all the dispensers. So there we go, 30 seconds of spawning time, 9 seconds later we turn off the spawner uh, we've got an exposed hopper, exposed hopper. All right, so let us uh, just signal, you know, test that uh, we've turned off the, turned on the farm rather. So when this torch is on, that means that lever is off, so this light is off. But when this torch is on, it means the farm is off. And uh, when this torch is off, the farm is on. So right now it's holding this block in this hopper. So once we turn that lever, that light's going to come on signaling, hey, the farm's on. And we'll leave it on for most of the time, but if we're going to do some traveling, we need to turn it off because this design does run the risk of major lag spikes. But uh, here, we'll just do a real quick test. And you'll be able to watch this. Uh, you can see it's going to pop down. So, 16, okay, dropping down real quick. Um, what will happen? There you go, you see the initial pulse. And then, not too much longer, 
We'll get another pulse out of this one. Okay, there we go. There's that second pulse. So let's go on up. And then this way you can see the rest of the farm, okay? So up here, right now we've got... Um, it's, it's not covered in water. What's going to happen is I will be putting water all along here. Let me pull that down. Actually, we got to do some testing first. Okay, so by default, there we go. That would be that the dispenser is just turned on. We should get another pulse here soon. There we go, and the dispensers turn off. So we're now in spawning time. Okay, and all of these should be working. That's what one spawning platform, two, three, four, five. All right, you can hear the water up top. We are, let's pull that up. We're at 249. Um, just above here is the cap. And there's water running on the top, and that's to keep Enderman from teleporting up there. But uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go back downstairs and turn the farm back off. It looks like the pulses are happening at just the right times. We're going to get this thing started, okay? Um, actually, we can't get it started quite yet. Ooh, scary noises. Um, pop that back on. That'll latch that thing once it comes back through. And the way this is going to work is once the farm goes off, the, um, the default state is going to be in mob spawning. Um, so those platforms up top will be empty once we turn the farm off so there will be no water flowing because that's the major lag producer um, so it will be spawning mobs whenever I'm up here so occasionally they will fall off they'll just walk off if I get close enough so we will get occasional mob drops but it won't be the uh, full flushing like we um, would normally see but uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to cover this whole area. Uh, we've got to cover all of the redstone to keep the water from washing it away. And then we're going to fill this whole area in with water. Um, just one one high. And there will be water covering our, uh, our redstone components here too. But um, I will do that off camera. In fact, I will take a quick break and uh, and do that. Then we'll fill in the water, and then we'll go up top and put in all the water buckets. And then we'll take care of the uh, mob drop area. And then we'll turn this thing on and see what we get, okay? So um, I'll cover this up and fill in the water area here. And then uh, I will bring you back in for the next piece and then testing, okay? So we're almost done. Stick in with me, and uh, I'll see you in just a moment, okay? Back in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I have taken care of the bottommost floor, and what, what I'm doing now is just I'm going to be loading the system. So here we go. I've got to take these out. And then we'll go through just uh, putting buckets of water into each one and once we do this the system is loaded and from this point on uh, coming up here will be rather dangerous because of the full range of mobs that will be available including and I'm most excited about this the Enderman and we'll see once we get this test done so loading up here and yeah I think we got what one more one more platform hit that and there we go all right we are pretty much done now what we need to do is go through and 
grab. Oh, do I only have one? I've only got one bucket left. Hmm, that'd be a bit problematic. Um, we gotta go. Hmm, I need one more bucket. So let me go get that, and I will get this whole area filled in with water, and then bring you back, and then we'll get that uh, get this thing going. I don't want to take too much more time, so uh, I will be back in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the moment of truth. So this is the bottom layer, and the engine that is driving it all is right under there. So we'll just pop down here real quick, and we'll give it a flick there, and we should see we can pop up just to watch the, uh, the pulse go. And that first, that first one where the water turns on is going to knock all of those torches right off. So hopefully that does it. Let's see what we get. That's a little bit difficult. There we go. No, no, no. Down. We'll see what we get. Oh, there's one more thing. There is a bug. In, uh, in in Minecraft, it has to do with the mob cap and your view distance. Okay, there go all of the torches. So that's good. Maybe we'll start getting some mobs. Oh, we gotta wait till all the torches come off. So it may be a little bit. Let's see what happens. I'm anxiously awaiting. We'll start getting drops. Hopefully. Zombies. Great. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is great. Um, as to the... Oh, we're going to get some drops that show up on the sides. Hmm. Huh. Due to just falling all out. Thankfully that was just zombie flesh, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll get some zombie flesh. So let's pop down and just see what we get. Amazing. Yes, that's great. That's good stuff. Okay, so you hear the spiders. So we might might occasionally get some spider eyes due to having to clear this out, but uh, I would say we are doing pretty well. Um, I'm not going to call it a success until I start getting ender pearls, but I'm not going to bring you along. I think we've gone long enough, so... I'm going to bring this to a close, so hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Join me next time as we, um, as we take care of this area down here, make it a little bit nicer, okay, and uh, work on something else, okay? We're, we're, you know, I think it might have to do with portals and villagers and um, more crushing mechanisms, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what we do, but uh, join me next time, and uh, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a thumbs up on it. It helps me out. If you really enjoyed and you've not done so already, uh, think about subscribing, but uh, as always, I do thank you for your time, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.